What's up plant lovers, Devin is here and today we're going to be talking about how we can really determine whether or not a plant is perfect for our gardening region. Now many of us have heard the question, what zone do we garden in? So this video is going to be first uh, dedicated to answering that question and then I'm going to go take it a little bit further and explain what that zone doesn't imply when we're selecting our plants. So as you can see, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has created a map divided into areas based on the minimum winter temperatures. And these zones are separated by a factor of 10 degrees and then further separated into five degree half zones. So for example, my garden in Chester County, Pennsylvania is in the zone 6B area. That means that the average annual winter minimum temperature is between zero degrees Fahrenheit and negative five degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if we take that to the next half zone, which would be 6A, that would be five degrees cooler. So their average minimum winter temperature is between negative five degrees Fahrenheit and negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Take it another half zone, we get to 5B, and that would be between negative 10 and negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And they created this map that goes from zones one, which is the absolute coldest like Alaska to zones 12, which would be like uh, perhaps um, Hawaii or Miami, Florida. Now, if you're tuning in from outside of the United States of America, many other countries, um, countries in Europe, countries in uh, Britain and New Zealand have also created their own specific zone maps that are roughly based on the same premise as the USDA one. So now the USDA zone is a great starting off point to determine whether or not a plant can survive the winters in your region. For example, if a plant is listed as being able to survive in zone 6B, then that means that its roots should be able to live through that zero to negative five degree temperature in, a, in the winter time. However, if you have purchased plants and notice that the zones that a plant is showing is kind of between a range, like this plant does well between zones six and eight, that basically means that any zone colder than zone six, that plant is not gonna be able to survive due to those weather, uh, win winter weather extremes. However, it probably also won't survive in zones beyond eight, such as nine, 10, 11, or 12, due to the summer weather extremes. So that's why having a range on a plant tag is really important for you to determine both if it can handle the winter time, but also the summertime. So when you are purchasing a plant at a garden center, or online, wherever, your plants definitely need to have a zone listed. If they don't, that it means one of two things. Either it's an annual and the zones really don't matter that much because it's only gonna live for that summertime, or the plant purveyor is not really serious about the plants that they're growing and selling, so you should just not buy those plants. Now, earlier I said that a zone is a great starting off point for determining if a plant will live in your area, but it doesn't tell the whole story. So it's not the only factor that you need to think about when deciding if you should indeed buy that new 20, 30, $100 plant to add to your garden. The other factors that you really need to determine that are not encompassed in that USDA zone map first and foremost would be precipitation. So let's take an example. Let's say we have an ice plant that is hardy to zone eight. Now, if you look at the zone map, you can notice on the map that there's various regions in the United States that have zone eight in their area. Places in Georgia, places in Texas, places in Washington state. Just by our own basic common knowledge, we know that those areas have much different climactic conditions. However, they all three have essentially the same winter extreme temperatures. Perhaps Texas is much drier in the winter time than say Washington state. And that zone eight ice plant may do perfectly well in that dry winter weather of Texas. However, due to the extra rain that it gets in Washington state, even though it's not you know, going beyond that winter extreme temperature, it might still get root rot from excess moisture. The zone map also doesn't account for snow cover in the wintertime, which absolutely acts as an insulating kind of blanket for roots. So an area that gets more snowfall may be able to grow plants that are less winter hardy than other areas that don't have that same snow cover. 
The next thing that we need to consider is the soil, which is also not covered in that zone map. Um, but going back to the ice plant example, let's say the garden in Texas you're gardening in really heavy clay in Texas. Now, you may not be receiving as much precipitation as you would in Washington State, but the precipitation that you do receive stays wet longer in that clay soil. Maybe it stays wet for too long, causing the roots of our ice plant to rot, even though it never got too cold for that ice plant to really survive the winter. Conversely, if we're gardening in Washington and we cite it on a slope where it has really rocky, gravelly soil that drains super quickly. Um, perhaps we do get a lot of excess precipitation, but because we've given it an area with great drainage, it doesn't matter. The winter temperatures are still within our range and the ice plant survives from one winter to the next. We also need to consider exposure to sunlight, um, both in the wintertime and in the summertime, which the zone map does not account for either. As we know, a zone 5B garden in Indiana versus a zone 5B garden in the foothills of Colorado are going to experience sun differently in the wintertime and in the summertime. And those are also factors that will go into whether or not a plant is really thriving or simply surviving. The zone map also does not account for the duration of time that a region experiences these average annual winter uh, minimum temperatures. Um, one area might reach that minimum temperature for one week. Another region might experience those winter, uh, low winter temperatures for an entire month. And that's greatly going to affect your plant's ability to survive through that winter. Um, conversely, the map does not account for the length of summertime either. So the length that a plant experiences hot temperatures is also going to be a contributing factor into the health, the long-term health of your plants. And if you've had failure growing a plant that was listed in your zone, this checklist can also help you determine which of those factors was really kind of missing from the equation that led to your plant's demise. I hope you found this video helpful and instructive on determining how you can decide which plants would be good additions to your garden. If you are here for the very first time, consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel. We're presenting new plant-related content every single week. Anyways, I'll catch you guys soon. Ciao.